So it is absolutely safe to say at this point that in 2024, Lucasfilm is in complete shambles after the Acolyte ratings disaster and the amount of money, by the way, the amount of funds that they poured into the budget of that project really only made things worse for Kathleen Kennedy. It only made things even worse for the rest of the Disney executives over there that really were the ones responsible for greenlighting this project by listening to Bob Iger and his demands to make the Acolyte possible a couple of years ago. But folks, Focusing now on what's been going on with Disney CEO Bob Iger, in the midst of the ongoing Lucasfilm purge is where Bob Iger begins to do desperate damage control, also in the wake of the ongoing Star Wars boycott, quote unquote. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So ever since 2012, when Kathleen Kennedy took over Lucasfilm, when Disney bought the company and really took things from there, it has been nothing more than a downward spiral, I would say after 2017. You know, 2015 you had a little bit of a promise about the future of where the franchise could go, but ever since The Last Jedi, it has been nothing more than a downward trend. Now this is where things begin to go out of control as Bob Iger really begins to double down. He engages in being very much hypocritical in nature. I mean, that's his typical Bob Iger. The man lies after all and continues to do so toward the customers and the shareholders. But here's what's really interesting is that he continues to go on this path of addressing this so-called Star Wars boycott and the ongoing narratives that he blames. Let's jump into this, shall we? Now specifically, of course, with Disney CEO Bob Iger already beginning to desperately go into damage control over multiple properties and brands under the Disney company, one of which being Star Wars, Bob Iger recently attempting to water down the fire that's been going on at Lucasfilm and the ongoing boycott and backlash from fans at the Acolyte. Iger delivered the following to address the, grown, the growing numbers of fans boycotting Star Wars as a whole. As CEO, I find it is my responsibility to remain transparent to our audience and our shareholders. In regards to our most valued division, Lucasfilm, I would like to address the continued criticism that we face today, coming from a small margin of our core customer base about a false narrative over the Disney company. We have found a growing number of individuals attempting to influence others to divert from our Star Wars brand and a property that we greatly respect to those that oppose our support for diversity, equity, and inclusion and are using that as a reason to not engage in our content related to our Lucasfilm division is not only offensive to the many creators that we hire, but to the many talents as well on board that we hire for these projects to keep everything equal in the working environment. We have witnessed a historic moment toward the Disney company that we find to be unacceptable where a group of our core customer base are convincing other members of the public to fall into a false narrative of what the Walt Disney Company stands for. I have stated this multiple times and I will make it clear again, we do not engage in any culture wars, nor do we participate in any kind of an agenda, especially at a division like Lucasfilm that adopts the stories from Mr. Lucas. I believe it's important to make it clear that these same individuals attempting to expand their false narrative about the Disney Company and our division in Lucasfilm is damaging to our image and I am here to tell everyone to let our product products speak for themselves when it comes to a brand as large as Star Wars. So guys, let me just say one thing about that real quick. Basically, he's begging for everyone to let the products speak for themselves. Well, he said the same exact thing before the Acolyte dropped. He said the same exact thing before The Rise of Skywalker came out into theaters. And mind you, he said the same exact thing when the Kenobi series was getting a lot of flack after not quite frankly you know, focusing on the character properly and more or less focusing on Reva. Now, what's really interesting about that has to do with there are a n there are a growing number of fans that are really walking away from this brand and are refusing to return no matter what they do. When Disney's beginning to realize this, you notice that he's very hypocritical even when he makes this yet again robotic CEO statement. How 
first it's a minority or a small margin of the core customer base, then it's a growing number of so-called fans as he likes to put it, and it seems like that he is admitting that there's a large group of the core customer base, but also saying that it's a minority. It makes no sense to me. That's basically Bob Iger admitting things, but also not admitting the problems over at Lucasfilm. Continuing on, he goes on to conclude, We are proud to be making more announcements very soon that we feel will cater to many, many loyal followers of the franchise. Our support for DEI will be greater for many films and television programs, leaving many possibilities open for the talents that we hire. I would also like to address that it is disheartening to see that a large portion, here we go, a large portion now, of our core customer base have started to fall into these false narratives about our most respected brand and how this is creating a division as a result. So first guys he says it's a small margin then it's a large margin. The guy doesn't know what to say anymore. Many of these same individuals he says like to throw around the word agenda or ideology and honestly I don't think they even understand what they are talking about when, it, when making such claims. The Disney company will always be about producing entertainment for all age groups and those that come from different backgrounds. Our support for DEI should not translate to an intention to drive away fans and is not part of any kind of an agenda. Well, look, DEI in and of itself is an agenda when you're focusing on that over proper storytelling and character development and entertainment. That's just a fact. You know, there's no way to really go around saying that. That is the true fact. If you're focusing on any kind of messaging over storytelling, that's an agenda. So I don't know what Bob Iger is going on about really saying that this is not an agenda or that Disney never engages in any kind of a culture war or anything like that when obviously they are trying to do that very thing. Now, we already know that 2024 had some, and I say some exceptions, all right? We know that Inside Out 2 made a whopping amount of money, uh, globally speaking, because they shifted away from that agenda, you know, to a certain extent, uh, to a large extent, I would say. But at the same exact time, Deadpool and Wolverine, another example. They were able to cave because Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy, the director, were making all these ultimatums about leaving Marvel and not dealing with Disney's nonsense, so they caved. So that movie did well because it didn't really have anything to do with the typical Disney agenda. Now, may you, would you probably find some little tiny things here and there, sure, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, it was not an agenda-driven uh, Marvel movie per se. So that's why that also made a lot of money at the box office. Disney doesn't seem to learn anything after either making mistakes or quite frankly even some uh, successful moments in their timeline. Whether it's throughout 2024 or what looms for next year, whether it's a success or failure, they don't seem to learn anything about that. They just care about what's done in the moment and any way that they can use to shoehorn in a message to basically, you know, listen to uh, the top three shareholders, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street funding all this nonsense. But I would like to hear what everyone has to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.